So the first example here, we have to convert the complex number z equals negative root 3 plus i into polar form, and then use de Moivre's theorem to calculate z to the 7th. So remember, to convert into polar form, you do r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, theta equals arctangent of y over x, and then sometimes you have to modify that theta formula. Sometimes you have to add on a pi, and you know you have to do that when the x is negative. You do that if x is negative. So let's find our r and our theta here. Let me graph that thing. Oops. Graph it just so that we'll be able to check whether our answer is plausible. Negative square root of 3 on the x-axis, i on the y-axis. So that's about right there. And let me uh, actually calculate out the r and theta to see if it's plausible. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. x squared is 3. y squared is 1. So square root of 4 is 2. Theta is arctangent of negative, or 1 over negative square root of 3, which is negative root 3 over 3. That's a common value. And so the arctangent of that is negative pi over 6. Oh, but there's this fudge factor that I have to include here. Um, it, the x is less than 0 here, so I have to add on a pi. So I add on a pi, and I get 5 pi over 6. And that does check with my little graph here, because that really is 5 pi over 6, the angle over there. And the radius does indeed look like about 2. So that's kind of reassuring. So z is equal to r e to the i theta. That's 2 e to the 5 pi over 6 i. So we have converted the complex number into polar form. That was the first uh, part of the exercise. But the main part here is to use de Moivre's theorem to calculate z to the seventh. So let's work that out. z to the seventh, the whole point is that we're going to use the polar form to find z to the seventh. So this is 2e to the 5 pi over 6 i, all raised to the seventh power. So that's 2 to the seventh. Now, I have e to an exponent raised to an exponent. So I just want to multiply those two exponents. e to the 7 times 5 is 35, whoops, 35 pi over 6. i. Now, 35 pi over 6 is a little cumbersome. That's not in between 0 and 2 pi. So I'll, I'll uh, work on that a little bit. In the meantime, 2 to the 7th is 128. Five, 35 pi over 6. How can I simplify that? 35 pi over 6. Let me subtract a 2 pi. 2 pi is 12 pi over 6. So that's 23 pi over 6. Uh, that's still not in my range between 0 and 2 pi. Let me subtract another 2 pi. That gives me another 12 pi over 6. Off is 11 pi over 6. That is in the range between 0 and 2 pi. So this is the same as e to the 11 pi over 6 i. Now I want to convert that into rectangular form. And it's very good to remember this formula. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And you can also use x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. But I prefer the e to the i theta form. So this is equal to 128 um, cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i times the sine of 11 pi over 6. So that's 128. 11 pi over 6, where is that on a unit circle? That's just pi over 6 short of 2 pi. 
that's down there. Now that's a common value. I know what the sine and cosine are. It's uh, root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And let's see, root 3 over 2 is positive. The sine is negative because it's below the x-axis, so it's negative 1 half. And so I have 128 over 2, that's 64 root 3. Uh, minus 64i is what that simplifies down to. Okay, let's review how we did that one. We start out with a complex number and we have to convert into polar form. So I look at my formulas for r and theta, including the fudge factor for theta if x is less than 0. Run that through, my x and y are negative root 3 and 1, so I get an r. I get a theta, including the fudge factor, and that gives me r e to the i theta, so I've got my polar form. To raise it up to the seventh power, uh, de Moivre's theorem says if you use polar form, then you just put 2 to the seventh, and then n theta, so this is the n theta, and that reduces down to, by subtracting 2 pi at a time, e to the 11 pi over 6. So this is really n theta here, cosine n theta, sine of n theta, although we reduce down by subtracting off 2 pi, over, uh, 2 pi at a time. And so we get 128 times the cosine and sine of 11 pi over 6. That's a common value. I look at my unit circle to remember my sine and cosine of 11 pi over 6. I plug them in and I get my answer.